All right, we can get back back into it. Um, I definitely like to feel like whatever I'm teaching is like the most important subject that there could possibly be, which is sort of true for thermo. Thermo is like fundamentally important. Who is this? Who? Why did I feel like someone said Ben Franklin? I think I imagined it. Um, Yes, fun fact, there's a picture of Einstein on Friends and Phoebe thinks it's her grandpa. But anyway, um, Einstein, not who you maybe traditionally think of when you think of thermodynamics, or when you think of his theories, you maybe wouldn't immediately tie it to that, but this is a quote from Einstein. He said, a theory is more impressive the greater the simplicity of its premises, the more different kinds of things it relates, and the more extended its area of applicability. Therefore, the deep impression which classical thermodynamics made upon me, it is the only physical theory of universal content concerning which I am convinced that within the framework of applicability of its basic <coughs> contents will never be overthrown. So that's a pretty bold statement. Um, so far, hasn't been overthrown. There are four laws of thermo, I guess. Zero, one, two, and three. And um, they persist. They do have broad applicability. Okay. Um, and so thermo is, it's pretty elegant in like its simplicity and how relevant it is, um, but that doesn't mean it isn't difficult to like master. It's, it's not easy by any means, um, but it's, it's, I think it's interesting stuff. Okay, so what is thermodynamics? Like most good words, it's from Greek, or like many, many words. What is thermos probably mean? Go for it. What, what do we think thermos means? Temperature? Heat. Heat. Yeah, I, possibly both. I mean, it's a translation. Heat. How about uh, dynamis or dynamikos? Change. Change. That's cool. That's a good word. What else? Motion. 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 Anybody else? So power is probably the most literal translation. Power or like a force um, is how that would translate. So thermodynamics is essentially the science that relates energy, heat, work, and temperature to one another, okay? So that, ooh, so easy. Okay, we'll just relate these like four really like possibly hard to theorize, like really nail down concepts. So definition of energy, the capacity to do work, um, literally what the book gives. So that's helpful. Um, energy is the capacity to have an effect produce a change, the ability to do work. And again, like I said, we'll define all of these. We'll spend more time defining this stuff and talking through it as the semester goes on. This is, you know, the intro teaser. Okay, work. Work is energy transferred by organized motion. It's a method of transferring energy from one system to another system. What organized here is an italicized font. So if we're now talking about what would be the opposite of organized motion? Disorder or random motion. So energy transferred by random particle motion, what do you think that might be? Heat. I mean, there was only a couple words up there to choose from. So beautiful. Energy transferred by random motion. Energy transfer that results from a temperature difference is the definition of heat. Okay. So. Besides power or force for the word dynamics, um, what else does the word dynamics make you think of? Especially maybe if you were to compare it to the word statics. Like someone said motion earlier, I think. Right? It makes you think of like things are moving, think that things are in motion. So thermodynamics is a little bit of a misnomer then as a title for this class because we will spend a lot of time talking about equilibrium. And equilibrium defines a state of a closed system where there are no net macroscopic changes going on. There's no flow of energy in and out of the system. Heat's not flowing, things aren't moving, no work is being like happening. Um, equilibrium is a state where at the macroscopic level, pressure's the same, temp's the same, volume's the same, everything's like st static, essentially. <laughs> we know that at the microscopic level, though, things are moving around. We know that everything is moving at the microscopic level, right? That is like the definition of temperature. Absolute zero is when everything stops moving. So 
So since we're never at absolute zero, in reality, solids, those bonds are vibrating. If it's a gas, the molecules are moving around, hitting each other, whatever. But again, equilibrium, macroscopically things aren't changing. Okay. I don't know if you guys will come up with the answer I wanted for this, but we'll see. What is the most classical example of thermodynamics? Like the traditional thing you talk about when you talk about thermal when you teach it. If, or used to be maybe. Engine. Beautiful. Engines. Talking about engines was like, that was how you were taught thermo. Um, and how they like understood and defined and came up with a lot of the stuff, which is great. Um, not relevant for us. This is BME. If you're super into engines, cool. I'm not, and I'm not going to talk about them. We're going to talk, but you know, the beauty of thermo is that a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about that was developed based on studying originally steam engines and then from there, the internal combustion engine, I'm going to show you how to apply it to literally like DNA and protein folding. So that's kind of weird that they're, they still connect through the same mathematical like relationships. So like I said, pretty, pretty elegant stuff. Okay, so let's talk about some biological examples. So these are all biological examples of work, okay? So here we have photosynthesis. We have mechanical work when this person picks up the barbell. Um, this figure here in the bottom left is showing concentration work. So we have um, some sort of molecule. I don't know what this is. <gasps> Great, now I have to put a telephone policy in my syllabus. Uh, my ringtone's still Christmas music, I need to change it. <laughs> um, so you have some um, you know, molecule that's, there's some on the inside and there's some on the outside, and if you're going to move that molecule across the cell membrane, if there's a concentration difference, if you go against the concentration, things wanna flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. Like I said, we'll talk about it all in more detail later. But if you go backwards against that, if you push more stuff inside the cell and the concentration is higher inside the cell, that takes work, that takes energy to get that done, okay? Um, if what you're transferring across the cell membrane happens to be ions, then you have some sort of charge component here. So we could be doing some type of electrical work. Um, once this guy holds this barbell, he's perspiring, so he's emitting heat, so we have some heat. Um, then also we have maybe bioluminescent work, light energy, firefly, so. Some biological examples, of which a few of them we will talk about in this class. Okay, what is, so in order to do a lot of this work, not all of it, but some of it, you know, especially the, the cell-specific stuff, I wanna drive something against the concentration gradient. I wanna move ions in and out of my cell. Photosynthesis. What is the energy source or the fuel source in cells? ATP. ATP. What does ATP stand for? Love it. There it is. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the fuel of biology, right? So these are two figures basically showing the same thing. There's some sort of energy that's coming in. Got to have energy from somewhere. Sunlight, food, wherever it might be. That energy is used to synthesize ATP. From there, ATP gets broken in half into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and a phosphate ion. And the energy that gets released from breaking that apart is energy that's available to do cellular work, chemical synthesis. It's going to release heat when that happens. You could make an electrical potential out of that. You can move molecules across the gradient. You can actually have cell movements. You can make the cell grow, whatever it is. The neuron is extending its little neurites. And I should tell you, watching videos of that neurite where it's all in grayscale and measuring it growing was like, I've lost permanent damage to my eyes looking at that stuff. So you might synthesize other cellular components, you might make other things. So again, um, ATP. That kind of represents all the real material for cooking. Um, did anyone look at the reading or do the reading that I posted online? Yes. Okay, it was, look at this, it was a PDF file. Um, it was called Prologue and Fundamentals from this textbook here, Physical Chemistry for the Life Sciences by Atkins and Paula. Um, this is a nice book. I recommend if you can get access to it. I mean, pretty much everything's on the internet now, so you might be able to find yourself a 
electronic copy or I think in the syllabus I put a couple other textbooks in there besides the one that is like our required textbook I listed a handful of others that might be useful um, I will because I can't require you to get those texts um, any readings listed on the schedule like I said again they're all optional although I recommend that you do use the textbook um, if there's any readings that I want to point you to that are not in our textbook I will post them I'll post them in the Canvas, and they'll be in that folder under files labeled readings, and that's where they'll be. Um, and they'll be titled whatever they're titled on the schedule, so they're easy to find. Um, I do strongly recommend doing this reading anyway, just because I think it's a really nice, like, just intro to this class. <coughs> it, 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 it really is nice. It touches on a lot of the topics that we are going to cover at some point. Some of it will definitely be review for you. Some of it might not be, and then you'll be like, Okay, I'm not ready for that part yet, whatever it is. Um, the prologue in particular gives some definitions to chemistry, physical chem, law, theory, what's a hypothesis, what's a model. It, put, it just puts some definitions on some of these words, which I think are nice. And then the prologue also talks about some applications of physical chemistry to biology and medicine. And the four things it talks about are techniques to study biological systems, protein folding, rational drug design, and biological energy conversion. All right, so which we just showed on the last two slides. How do we make sunlight turn into chemicals inside the cell, whatever it is? We will talk about all of these things during the semester. So like I said, I think it's just a nice, um, it's a nice prologue to the class. The fundamentals reading is more where um, it like refreshes you on chemical bonding, refreshes you on like protein structure. And like I said, we're gonna spend the next four or five days doing all of that, but I think it's a nice, like, get yourself ready.